What's going on everybody? Welcome to After Prison Show and welcome to After Prison Show Studio B. As you can see right here in the background, we have set up the painting studio for After Prison Show. Now for those of you who may not be familiar, old Joe here, while he was in prison, he was actually a prison mural painter. That's right, my actual prison job actually consisted of painting actual pictures on prison walls. And with that, I actually gained quite a bit of experience learning how to paint. And FYI, I actually had no idea how to paint before going to prison. But this is a new series that I do want to start here on After Prison Show called How to Paint Like a Prisoner. And what I hope to do in this series is actually teach you out there, the viewing audience, how to paint like a prisoner. And you know, to be honest with you, I'm not really sure that's something that people would actually want to know. But maybe it is. Who knows? So with that, in this first video, I'd like to teach you how to paint a picture. In fact, we're going to be painting this picture right here. This is actually a painting that I just did last night. And if I told you just how long it took me to paint this picture, you probably wouldn't even believe it. But this picture right here only took me about 10 or 15 minutes to paint. So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to take a canvas like this and turn it into a canvas like that. So with all of that being mentioned, let's begin. So the first thing that I want to say about creating a painting like this is I know this may look like a complicated painting to create, but I have to assure you it's really not that hard to create at all. In fact, this is probably one of the easiest paintings that you can learn. A sunset type of scene with a little silhouette landscape right there in the foreground. And also real quick to throw into this as well, with everything that I learned about how to paint while I was in prison as a prisoner, I actually came home from prison and was doing paint night events teaching paintings just like this. So with me mentioning that, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that this is quite an entertaining learning experience. So why don't we take this canvas right here and turn it into a picture that looks like this. Well, the first thing that we need to do is we need to get rid of this. Well, the first thing that we need to do is we need to get rid of this painting altogether. So we're just going to take this and the painting is gone. So right here we have our fresh canvas, and this is a 16 by 20 inch primed canvas. And if you don't know exactly what a primed canvas is, that means that there is actually a coat of gesso across this canvas, which is actually going to allow this paint to sit on this canvas a lot better. If this was not a primed canvas, when we went to try to paint on this canvas, the paint would actually just absorb into the canvas, and the paint wouldn't really sit on the canvas too well. So you always want to make sure that anything that you are painting, you're doing so on a primed surface. Now let's talk about what we will be using to paint this landscape slash silhouette painting. We are only going to be using one paintbrush for this entire painting. And the brush that we will be using is this right here, a three inch natural bristle flat brush. Let's also talk about what else we will need. We're obviously going to need paint, we're going to need water, we're going to need a rag, and we're also going to need some sort of a palette to put our paint on. Now this is a trick that I learned from painting while locked up, and while painting while locked up, a lot of times you're just really not going to have all the right supplies for the job. So because of that, you're going to have to actually create your own supplies. And one such thing that we had to create was our paint palette. This right here is our homemade paint palette, and what it is, it's basically just a piece of cardboard with a trash bag taped to it. This is what we're going to use to put our paint on and get busy with some painting. We've also got a cup of water. We're going to need that to clean our brush out with. And last, our paint. Now this paint that I'll be using is the cheapest damn acrylic paint you can find at any art supply store. It's called Crafts Smart Acrylic Paint. And this is blue, red, yellow, white, and also black. Now as we dive deeper into these Paint Like a Prisoner videos, I will be teaching you a lot more about overall painting in general. And one such thing that I will be teaching you about is the wide variety of colors that actually come with doing real painting work. 
In fact, when you do real painting work, you're not gonna be using paints that are called yellow, blue. There's literally like a hundred different varieties of this hue right here. But again, we will dive into that deeper into this series. Right now, I just wanna focus on showing you how to create a very simple yet awesome landscape silhouette painting using the most basic of supplies. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take our brush, we are gonna dip it inside of our water getting our brush wet we're gonna wipe it a little bit on our rag just to get most of the water off of it but we want to take that wet brush and just run it across our canvas we want to get this canvas wet so that this paint cooperates a lot better on this canvas this is really going to help us when it comes to our blending of the paint and also helping to ensure that our paint is not going to dry up so fast on our canvas with our canvas wet, the next step is to begin applying paint. And when it comes to acrylic painting, one major rule of thumb is that you always work from your darker colors to your lights. So we are gonna start with our top color, our darker blue, with a little bit of red mixed into that. Our paint palette, our paint. Oh yeah. Let's go ahead and get that blue on there. Next, our red. Go ahead and drop that red right there. We don't need a whole lot of paint for this painting, so we've got about that much right there to start with. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start grabbing some of this blue right here, and I'm gonna grab some of this red, and I'm just gonna mix that up right there in the middle. And what I'm gonna get with this mixing is a nice purplish color. That's a pretty nice purple color. With that purple, let's begin to apply our paint. And that's already starting to give us that dusky sky appeal. We wanna make sure that we're getting paint on all edges of the canvas as well. Let's go ahead and mix up some more paint. We're gonna need it. So we're just mixing, looking for that purplish color. Once we found it, let's continue to apply the paint. And again, you're gonna see just how quick this painting actually comes together. Now this does not have to be perfect at all. The one thing that you really will learn while painting is it's all about your confidence of the actual painting. You just have to be confident going into it. We're gonna wet our brush just a little bit, getting just a little bit of water on that brush and then getting right back into that purple. And again, let's just start throwing that paint on that canvas. Oh yeah, oh yeah, look at that, look. Woo. With a good amount of purple thrown onto this canvas, it's now time to dive into our red. But first, we need to clean out our brush. So we're gonna dip that in the water we're just gonna clean this brush out. Making sure to get that purple paint out of that brush. I'm going straight into this red. Just grabbing that red right there on that brush. And next, I'm gonna start throwing the red in there. And look at how that's already starting to blend into that sky. And you can see that the way that I'm running the brush is not really straight across the canvas. I'm kind of doing this cross hatching pattern with the brush. And that's gonna help add texture to that sky. But I want some more red in this. So let me go ahead and get some more red. So I'm throwing this red right down here. I'm gonna go ahead and keep that going just like so. Continuing to blend it in. Look at how that's just blending on in there. And I'm also going all the way up to the top of this painting because this painting is relatively wet. So by me continuously going up into there, I'm kind of getting some of that water out as well. I'm gonna go ahead and clean the brush off now because I feel like I'm done with the red. I really don't want no more red in this painting. I wanna move on to a different color, is that okay? Brush cleaned out, time to get some more paint. We're gonna be going with our funky little yellow right here. We've got our palette, we've got our yellow. We're just gonna drop some yellow. We don't need a lot, just a little bit. With our brush cleaned, we're going straight into this yellow. Bong, 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 bong. Got a good amount of yellow on the brush. And we're going right down here. And we're gonna mix that right up into the bottom of this red, just like so. Bringing that across this canvas. And it doesn't matter how far down the canvas we come. And again, remember, as you're doing this painting, to be always hitting your edges at the same time. More yellow. Let's go from this side now. Oh yeah. Now the good thing about doing these silhouette landscape paintings is the bottom, it's really not that important. So it really doesn't matter what we do 
down here in the bottom. I'm gonna get one more little bit of yellow and I'm gonna go right here. Ooh, that looks good. Nice. Nice, Joe. It's a nice painting. And again, cross hatching all throughout the canvas, getting that excess water off as well. We's done with the yellow. Cleaning out this brush again, it's time to move on to the next color, and that is the white. Now, I have to tell you something first and foremost. When learning to paint, white can absolutely enhance a painting or it could absolutely destroy it. Meaning that if you use too much white in your sky, things are gonna look real crazy. So we wanna be very, very lenient with this white color right here. With our white opened up, let's just go ahead and pour just a drop. That's all we want. We just want like a little bitty drop of white paint right there. And to be honest with you, we're not even gonna use all of that white. We just need a dab of it. In fact, I think that's even too much, so I'm gonna kind of like brush my brush right here just to make sure I don't have too much in my brush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go right here and right here, and I'm just gonna start throwing that white in there. And what this is gonna do is give the effect of like some clouds in the sky. Oh yeah, starting to see some cloud cover. Rain could be coming in this painting. I'm not honestly sure though, I'm not a meteorologist, I'm just a prison painter. And again, using that cross hatching method, we're gonna go ahead and clean out this brush because the next step is the funnest step of them all. And that is the silhouette landscape that's going into the bottom area of this painting. Now before we add the silhouette landmass in the bottom of this painting, a good rule of thumb is to let this dry for a little while, sort of to let this painting just go ahead and run its course. It's not gonna take too long for this to dry, maybe 10, 15 minutes at the most. But we're not gonna wait, we're just not. We're just gonna go ahead and add this in. And the reason we're not gonna wait is because we're just gonna freehand this landmass into this painting. If you do allow the painting to dry, you can actually take a pencil and etch in your landmass. That way you have like some training wheels to follow for your actual shapes of your land. Now also one other thing to keep in mind as well, this is really just like a base coat of paint. If you wanted to let this dry and then come back and really fine tune this painting, you could do that. You could follow the same steps that we've done thus far in this painting and it would actually make the painting look even better. But basically all I've wanted to do here is just a crash course introduction into how to paint like I used to paint while I was locked up. And what I hope you've learned from this is just how easy it is to blend colors in together, how you always start from your darkest and work down into your lightest or wherever your darks are, working towards your lights, and just how awesome of a painting you can actually do with one single brush. But now we're gonna go ahead and add the land mass in here. So what we need is some black paint. We've got our paint right here, our paint palette, and we're gonna drop some black paint. Black paint goes a long way in paintings as well, just as white paint. Again, this color, just as the white, can either super enhance a painting or absolutely destroy it. But what we're doing with this silhouette land mass, we don't really have anything to worry about. In fact, it's really kind of hard to go wrong incorporating this black silhouette landmass in the bottom of our painting here. With our brush, we're gonna go right into that black paint, making sure we got a good little amount of that on our brush, and we're just gonna start building our landmass in our painting. Now, something that you do wanna keep in mind when adding the land in here is the composition of the painting. A painting is supposed to be appealing to the eye. And the way that a painting is appealing to the eye is if it is in good composition. And good composition means that while looking at that painting, you are drawn in to the center of that painting. And a good way to do that is to always make sure that your land mass starts at a high point, dips down somewhat, and then kind of gradually goes back up. It's just a really good way to add good composition to a beginning type silhouette landscape painting. And we're gonna do just that. We're gonna start adding this land mass in here. I know this is gonna look crazy at first, but don't you worry none. We're gonna get this thing looking pretty sick. You're probably thinking to yourself, oh my God, Joe, it's looking crazy. What's gonna happen with this painting? How is this gonna turn out? Is it gonna be okay? To be honest with you, I have no idea. I'm actually a little nervous myself at this point. And with this three inch brush, the bristles are kind of like all over the place. So as we're doing this, you can see how the bristles are just kind of like adding all of this texture and design into this. 
But that's kind of a cool thing because it only adds characteristic and definition to this landmass down here. Hell, we could be looking at like some grass, some overgrown brush area. Maybe somewhere like where I hid from the police when they were chasing me that time through that apartment complex. Grabbing some more black paint? Let's start working this side. Oh yeah, let's throw that black paint on up in there. And voila, our painting is complete. What do you think? Do you think it looks okay? Do you think it looks horrible? I want to hear exactly what you think. I also want to know if you try this at home. And also something else to keep in mind, After Prison Show will soon have art supplies available so you can paint right along with these Paint Like a Prisoner videos. This is sort of like prison paint night brought to you right here on After Prison Show. Hey, look, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did so, please leave a like and a comment letting me know exactly what you thought about it. As always, enjoy life, the free world. Never take a moment for granted, and make the most of every day.